Introducing Diffusion B by Devam Gupta. So he created this open source, downloadable, installable piece of software that uses stable diffusion on your M1 Mac or M2. I'll link to the repo down below. And I went ahead and installed it. I know installing software from the web, it's who knows what it's doing, but I wanted to really try it out. I've been trying Mid Journey. I subscribed to Mid Journey because I really like it. I've been playing with it. My kids love it. And this one allows you to run this thing, not somewhere on the server, in the cloud, away from your machine, but on the machine right here i can just type stuff in and generate stuff it says stable diffusion requires a lot of ram here is stable diffusion it's by stability.ai you can check out this post it's like dolly it allows you to create these awesome ai generated images so i wanted to see what we can do let's try this out shall we i always like to start with this one hr geiger's or hr geiger's alien you know the alien movies I really like that art, that style. So let's see what it can do. Oh, it also says it requires 16 gigs and it's gonna be slow if you have eight. This is the MacBook Pro with the M1 Max chip in it, 64 gigs of RAM, so I should be okay. By the way, if anybody's doing this and you wanna see a comparison on a Mac Studio with the M1 Ultra, let me know in the comments. Here, I'm just playing around with it. I'm not doing any kind of benchmarking or performance comparisons. So this is HR Giger's Alien, huh? Well, it's it kind of looks like his style, but it's more of a pencil drawing as a opposed to uh, airbrush. It doesn't really look like the alien, but it has some characteristics of the alien. Now, the nice thing here is you can just keep clicking generate and it's gonna keep creating new art. Pretty sweet. I'm just basically leaving that prompt exactly the same and clicking generate and there we go. Here's another one. Now, in the docs, he used a similar example, a photo of a xenomorph dragon. You know what? I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna use his prompt. So high detail or parts of his prompt, photo realistic, trending on art station. I don't know what that is, but I'll put that in and ray traced. Let's see if this gives me better results because they're not shining enough. Okay, okay, that's better. We're getting somewhere. It still doesn't look like Alien, but it looks like his artwork. All those little details, the tubes running in there. That's pretty cool. I like it. Here's another one. Now I want to try something else. Uh, let's do um, Schwarzenegger. <laughs> I'm not expecting any kind of photorealistic thing of uh, a human being especially because, well, faces are really notoriously difficult to generate by these things, realistic faces. That's pretty good. That looks like Arnold Schwarzenegger. Wow. And it looks like it's, um, it's not photorealistic, obviously. It's high detail. It looks like a pencil drawing, like a really nice pencil drawing. Hey, that's very good. Wow. Let's do it again. I want to see what else it can do. Uh, I don't know about that one. It looks like a video game version of Arnold Schwarzenegger. Now, by the way, each time I click generate, it takes probably about 15 to 20 seconds. So not bad. I wonder why it's giving me black and white though. Let's do color photo of Arnold. Maybe that's going to make it colored. What the heck is this? It didn't give me anything. I think I'll go back to the previous one. And there is also image to image, which is not there yet, but it's coming soon. You're going to be able to take your image, I'm guessing, and just generate a new one from it. Looking forward to that there's advanced options here which i really haven't played with steps i don't know the more steps the better what about this guidance scale i don't know what that does the documentation doesn't really say much about that oh my dog is here axel this is axel hi axel should we generate you <laughs> so that he's a rhodesian ridgeback let's let's try that that's the kind of breed that he is so we'll see if how well this does you just saw him now you get to compare <laughs> It's okay. Uh, I don't know. It doesn't l look, it's not wrinkly enough. <laughs> those folks that have Rhodesian Ridgebacks, you know what I'm talking about. That's better. You see all those wrinkles on the forehead? That's what I'm talking about right there. And that's pretty good. Now actually coming up with these prompts is an art form in itself. So I think the art that's generated is also going to be pretty useful, but the people that are going to be generating the artwork are going to be artists. And they're gonna to need to learn a new way to think about their imagery, which is gonna involve converting what they're thinking about the art into words that the machine will be able to understand. And then the machine can take those words 
and convert them into artworks. I don't think the people's job is going to be taken by this. I think the people that are going to adapt are the ones that are going to start using this to augment their own work. Speaking of that, let's uh, let's see how this compares to some other things like there's Dolly and then there's Mid Journey. And some of these prompts are really developed, I should say. So what you do is you type a prompt in and then you iterate on that prompt to make it better and better and to fit what you need better and better. So here is an example and these are probably developed. You probably start out with something like Rhodesian Ridgeback and you add more stuff to it. So here's a prompt that looks pretty cool. It's a landscape, some kind of fantasy land. So let's try this. I'm going to plug this same prompt right into here. Now all these flags might not be active in this tool, but I'm just going to go with it and see what it generates. That is actually pretty cool. Wow. <laughs> if I would have I don't think I could have come up with that because some of these are pretty intense, these prompts. Here's a really interesting one. And so is this one. Wow. You know what? I want to do this one. Let's do this. <laughs> Photo of an extremely cute alien fish swimming in alien habitat, habitable underwater planet. Okay. That's, that's pretty intense. Let's try this again using that prompt. Now, while that's running, check it out. We're using a lot of memory, almost 14 gigs by text to image. That must be the underlying tool that this thing uses. Interesting. Okay, we've got some photorealistic stuff going on here, but the fish looks kind of weird. I mean, you can tell it's a fish, but it's, it's an interesting fish. I wouldn't call it cute though. Definitely not a cute fish. Alien fish, yes. Cute fish, no. Rubber duck aliens visiting Earth for the first time, hyper-realistic. This is a pretty short prompt, but look at the results. Those are beautiful. I wonder what they used here, Dali or Mid Journey. It doesn't really say, but let's try that one. Okay, this is still the old uh, prompt I ran it again with the alien fish. That, <laughs> that actually kind of looks like an alien fish. I've never seen a fish like that on this planet, but who knows? There's probably a lot of fish we didn't discover yet. All right, rubber duck aliens visiting Earth for the first time. Let's see what that one's all about. Those, I don't know what to say about that. These kind of look like partially rubber ducks, partially alien rubber ducks, and they look realistic. They got the, the water, the, the wet look. This one doesn't really. It did a really good job with Schwarzenegger though. What if it um, does a good job with existing images out there? So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna try to grab that previous prompt that was working pretty well, this one. Let's put that in. And instead of the alien fish, I'm gonna do something like C, no, R2, D2, and C3PO. Is it C3P0? Yeah, probably C3P0. You always say C3PO, but is the O a zero or is it an O? I guess it's an O. C-3PO shows you how much of a Star Wars fan I am. Okay. Okay, that definitely looks like R2-D2. That one does not look like C-3PO. I'm sorry. No, <laughs> that's not gonna fly. Maybe it doesn't have any clue what a C-3PO is. Maybe it needs a C-3P0. Let's try this. We'll eliminate R2-D2 because we know it's good at that one. I wonder how much of the original image it actually recycles to show me this. Hey, there he is. A C-3PO like alien creature in a dreamlike landscape. By the way, I'm pretty hooked on this. I could just sit here for hours looking at this stuff. It's got some characteristic of a C-3PO, but what the heck is this? His arm is connected to his butt? Ugh. That is something George Lucas never planned for. But that's what we got. The Fusion B. Run it locally, get interesting results. Check it out. Looks pretty cool. See ya.